Hi, Thomas. Hi, Chuck. Nice to see you. Uh, yes, really just, yeah, the only thing is if I want to do a modification. So I, I, I'm going to add my microphone. Uh, okay, okay, let's, I, I will manage this. Okay, so I'm going to, to present it again. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Wigley Seminar, Quantum and Classical Statistical Physics Seminar at the Department of Physics, Universidad de Guadalajara. Today, our guest speaker is Dr. Dennis Boy. He is quite well known. He did his PhD in 1995 from Université Pierre at Marie Curie, France. Then he did his postdoc in Universidad de Chile and Florida State University. And then he joined in 2002 in IF Punam as a faculty. Presently, he is uh, Professor Investigator Titular Se at the uh, Department of Complex System in IF Punam. He is SNE3. He has wide interest of research, including which include random walk and stochastic process, dynamics of ecosystem, complex network and social structure, pattern formation and defects, sound flow interactions, and so on. He is quite well known and um, authored uh, many very popular paper. So today his talk will be his title of his talk is Intermittent Resetting Potential. And let us welcome Denny. 
Denis, platform is yours. Thank you very much, Soham, for the nice uh, introduction. Uh, and thank you to all of you for, for the invitation, for the, to the organizers of this nice uh, seminar. I have seen the, the nice drawing that you've done uh, for the presentation. And that's the first time that I have such a nice announcement. So uh, I would like to talk about uh, a work uh, which is quite recent. You, you can find here the reference. It has been published uh, last year. And it is done in collaboration uh, mainly with, with these uh, three people. Uh, Gabriel Mercado Vasquez is a PhD student at the Instituto de Física with me. And he's actually the main uh, character of this work uh, because uh, all the results that I'm going to present basically were obtained by him. And it is also a joint work with uh, Satya Majumdar and Gregory Scher that you may have listened uh, recently, who are both uh, at Orsay in France. Uh, so, uh, the, briefly, the, the outline of the talk. Uh, so, I, I will first uh, quickly uh, talk about diffusion process with resetting, which is the main interest here in this talk, uh, and some application and extensions that are, have been considered uh, recently in the literature. And I would like to present spe specifically an experimental motivation, uh, an experiment uh, that has motivated uh, our work. Uh, and I will go through the main uh, part uh, uh, of diffusion in intermittent uh, confining of potential and present uh, the, the results uh, afterwards. So, um, one of the main topic uh, of uh, this talk is about uh, search processes. So many uh, phenomena in uh, nature uh, can be understood as a search processes. Uh, so a search process is basically when you have an entity, a particle for instance, which is searching for another entity, uh, typically for reaction for instance. So it can be for instance a particle of pollen which is transported by the wind and with sticks, who seeks to, to find some other plants to, for pollinization and uh, reproduction. Or you can uh, consider, for instance, some animal in uh, foraging ecology, uh, which is quite a well-developed uh, field actually, uh, where you may have an animal searching uh, its environment uh, to find uh, some uh, patch of food. Uh, at a very different scale of molecular signaling, uh, you can may consider these uh, particles, uh, these complex uh, macromolecules, and anti like antigens, uh, that uh, diffuse in a medium, uh, like the inter, for instance, the intercellular uh, medium, in order to to bind very specifically on some sites which are at the membrane uh, of a cell. And uh, by this binding, uh, some important processes uh, would start inside the, the cell, for instance. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the creation of antibodies, for instance, uh, as a, to, to a reaction to an infection. And also we have search pro processes uh, for rescue operation, where we are looking for someone which is lost, or for optimization problems, uh, when we look for the best parameter for a given problem in a parameter space. And uh, also the, the topic of today is related with this search uh, model, which has been proposed uh, from uh, some time ago, not so, not so long ago by Evans and Majumdar, and very, very nearly 10 years ago, which is diffusion with uh, stochastic resetting as a search uh, mechanism and a search strategy. So the problem uh, is very simple. Let's assume a particle. So this is a space-time diagram. You have a particle that starts uh, at the origin, uh, at some position x naught, sorry, and start to do perform some uh, random movement, for instance, could be Brownian motion or a random, a random walk or even uh, some uh, more complicated motion or even deterministic motion. 
And uh, from time to time, the particle is set back to its starting position, uh, more or less regularly. For instance, at the exponentially distributed time interval, and the particle, the process is restarted, right? So in the case of a Brownian or diffu simply diffusing particle, so the, the diffusion equation uh, must be modified uh, this way. So we have the probability, the density of presence of uh, the particle at time t, given by this function, p of x t, given an initial position x naught, is the diffusion equation with these additional terms that uh, tells that we are uh, removing the particle at a constant rate from one place and set it back uh, to the fixed position x naught. And uh, so there are basically two important uh, novelty uh, with this uh, process compared to simple diffusion. The first one is that it is a non-equilibrium process in the sense that the local detail balance is uh, broken. So, uh, for instance, you can go from any position to the to the starting position in an infinitesimal time interval, but the reverse transition is forbidden. So we do not have the detail balance, and this gives rise to solutions which are quite different from the nice Gaussian that we know. Uh, as solution of the diffusion equation. In particular, we have non-equilibrium steady state. So at, as t goes to infinity, as uh, the probability density of the particle tends to this exponential profile when we have a characteristic uh, length scale to the, to the localization of this particle around the, the starting uh, position, uh, which depends on, on this parameter uh, alpha naught. So the second property, which is important, is assume that here we have a target at the origin. And the goal for this particle is to find this target. And uh, so what we are interested typically in uh, first in uh, search processes that I, is typically the time that it takes to arrive at the target place, at the goal, the objective, for the first time rather than the density or the probability to occupy the, first, the particular place. So this T1 is the first passage, is called a first passage time, and it's a stochastic. If the particle has a stochastic uh, trajectory, a dynamics, then this would be a random variable. So the mean first passage time to get to this uh, in this or the origin where the target is located is given by this simple expression. And the most important property is that it is finite for any resetting rate. Uh, so this quantity, uh, it is a well-known uh, uh, phenomenon uh, known from stochastic, uh, from the theory of uh, probability and uh, stochastic process, that simple diffusion is not a very good uh, search strategy. And uh, because if we set r equals to zero, which is uh, the limit of simple diffusion, t goes to e is equal to infinity. So it's well known that even in one dimension, even if the starting position is close to the target, in general, the searcher will take an infinite time to find the target. And uh, this is due to the fact that there are long excursions that go on the opposite side and that can be arbitrarily long. And that makes that the average of the first passage time is actually infinite. So this function here is actually uh, as a minimum for a particular uh, resetting rate, which is given uh, by this expression and depends on the diffusion coefficient and on uh, the distance uh, of the target from the from the origin. And z is uh, some uh, dimensionless uh, number, uh, which is solution of a nonlinear equation. So, which which all all this says that uh, not only uh, we have a finite mean first passage time, but this can be made minimum if we choose correctly the resetting rate or more or less the, let's say, the, the time interval between two consecutive resetting events. So basically, 
Uh, if we reset very often, so we will stay around here and we will never find this target. And if we don't reset it, we, we, this kind of trajectory will happen uh, with a high probability. So uh, this has many applications, for instance, in foraging ecology, where the, can, the particles can be an animal and it returns to its nest or its burrow. Uh, in computer science also, we are used to to solve, uh, scientists are used to solve complex problems of optimization uh, or combinatorial problems uh, that are difficult to, to solve. And uh, one strategy is to look for solutions. And if nothing really happens after some while, a while you just reset the, the run and the simul or the simulation and uh, restart again with new initial condition hoping that you will have a better luck. Uh, in enzymatic reaction, so it's relevant, uh, these are reactions where something had happened, that something goes wrong, and we are get back to the initial uh, situation, the initial condition of a reactant, uh, which has not uh, given uh, any, any, project, in, any product. There is a problem of copies. If you do copies, uh, for instance, when you have a key, and you want to, to use it to open a door and uh, you make a copy and then a copy of the copy and, and so on. After some times, uh, the, the copy uh, may not uh, open the door anymore because there are too many diffusion, too many mistakes that have accumulated and you need to restart from the true original. And there are other, other application in, uh, in uh, genetics uh, for instance, a phenomenon called uh, gene conversion and which is used during evolution. So typically when you have a gene and the, or DNA, a whole DNA, you have the gene on the DNA are, are, are evolving uh, through uh, local mutation, so which produces slow diffusion in the genome space. But sometimes uh, the organism may uh, simply eliminate a whole part of the DNA and replace it by a copy of uh, the other parts. So which produce a very big displacement in the genome space, which is not quite like a resetting, but it's kind of similar to the resetting. And there, so the, the target is to achieve for the organism uh, eye fitness. Uh, so these are the targets to be, to be achieved. And this may be achieved faster if you do these kind of uh, uh, duplications and uh, gene conversion. And there are also other applications in uh, population dynamics problems where you may have extinctions due to external factors. And I refer you to the, some uh, uh, review paper, which is quite recent, uh, by Evans Majum Dainscher uh, on uh, this, this subject and, and the application. So th there has been many extension uh, of the simple model that I've presented in 1D. Uh, you may consider rates that are dependent uh, of time. Uh, you can consider resetting, which is periodic and not uh, given by a rate, a constant rate, or other distribution of resetting times, uh, like a very general distribution of resetting times. Uh, or resetting time that depends on position, or the position, or reset that uh, to different sites, not to only one site. And uh, this site can be the previously visited site. So these are interesting problems which are highly non-Markov, and uh, with, because they have memory, and they, that show uh, interesting anomalous diffusion behavior. And that quite mimic rather well the behavior of animals or the behavior of human or the human mobility patterns. So uh, also you can uh, uh, press reset a different kind of process, not necessarily your simple random work, but uh, levy flights or anomalous diffusion model, uh, random works with anomalous behavior, like continuous time random work, or process with a drift, uh, and etc. And uh, also the search space, that's an interesting question because and most of the theory is very well understood in 1D uh, for the semi-infinite line. 
And uh, there are a few extensions that has been considered, for instance, in arbitrary dimension. So if you have, for instance, a, a very large parameter space and you are diffusing in this space and you want to find an optimal, which is represented by a target, or it can be bound, a bounded domain. So that's interesting because it introduces an additional uh, time scale, uh, length scale to the problem. Uh, lattices or even uh, random and complex networks which are sophisticated or complicated search space and that's actually a, a, a case that we have re uh, considered recently at the Physics Institute uh, with my colleague uh, uh, Alejandro perez Riascos and, and co-workers. So uh, most of the example that I've been, uh, so there is a lot of <laughs> things that have been done on, on the theory, but there are very little experiments on the resetting process. And uh, so I've mentioned uh, some uh, biological or technological or computational applications, but uh, there is a question, can we imagine a very simple physical experiments that could would do this kind of resetting process or that would mimic a search based on a resetting protocol. And can we study this in a lab uh, with a not very, with something which is maybe not very complicated to implement? So uh, there are two uh, challenging aspects uh, in the theory of resetting process is, the first one is that real particles cannot be reset to the origin in instantaneously in zero time which is an important assumption of most of the model uh, based on resetting. So you just switch on the computer and restart, and it takes very little. But uh, in the physical world, the particle cannot move infinitely fast. And also, the reset position is not exactly the same. And there might be some dispersion around the... And so uh, recently, maybe this is only one of the very, very few experimental paper that exist on resetting process. And uh, it has been uh, uh, achieved uh, with uh, microspheres manipulated with optical tweezers. Uh, so what we have here is a particle which is uh, which diffuse freely in uh, in a two D environment, and we are asking when uh, the particle is going to reach for the first time this wall here, and. Uh, Periodically, with a period T, the particle is just the diffusion is interrupted and uh, sent back to the starting position with an optical tweezer that just exert uh, optical force on uh, the particle, and uh, and then it is released again, and and we repeat this until uh, the, there is one fluctuation that reaches the. The, the, the goal. And uh, so here we have a phase. So these are these uh, red phases. Uh, they are the one that when the particle are captured is captured and it is uh, equilibrated for some time. So we do not count the time. Here's a clock for the search. And uh, then it is released. Then there is a new run. And then this is captured again, uh, equilibrated. Uh, so we do not count this period of time into the search time and etc. Uh, and we see that there are some these interesting uh, effect with the, the dispersion that was observed. First, when uh, the optical tweezer is really strong and uh, can really localize a particle uh, very precisely uh, at a given position, uh, typically the origin. Uh, we see typically the non-monotonic uh, shape of the mean first passage time that I mentioned uh, previously. So and this is something like the square root of the resetting rate, and t is a period of resetting. And there is a, it's quite shallow, but there is an optimal somewhere here, All right? So, and, uh, but if uh, sigma, is uh, finite, so there is uh, some new effect that appear, which are quite interesting. For instance, some kind of multimodal uh, curve. So the mean first passage time depends non-monotically with the period of uh, the, the period of resetting 
but it also has uh, these uh, variations. And what uh, was uh, uh, an absolute minimum here can become a local minimum, and there might uh, be some other minimum for a very large C, or C goes to infinity, that can be lower than, than this one, or even the minimum can disappear and, and give rise to this uh, monotonic uh, decreasing uh, behavior. So the goal here uh, is, is essentially to, uh, to study theoretically a phys first uh, physical search process uh, based on resetting. And that uh, we want to use external potential to mimic resetting. So that uh, this could be done with uh, some uh, in a real experiment uh, that requires maybe little tracking and little manipulation of, of the particle. And actually, in this physics institute, uh, there is a lab who, who can do that. And we wanted to do that uh, just before the pandemic uh, happened. And uh, so unfortunately, we don't have any uh, I do not have any experimental results to, to show you, uh, and, but uh, only theoretical. And from a fundamental point of view, uh, so this the problem that we are interested in are related with first passage time problems in a non-equilibrium system, typically in a fluctuating or time-dependent uh, environment. So the the party the problem is that we are tackling uh, here uh, is quite uh, simple to formulate. So imagine that you have a particle that performs a random walk or a Brownian motion in one D. So this is uh, the one D uh, line starting from some initial position, and there is a target somewhere here at uh, some uh, fixed uh, coordinate. And we are looking for uh, the time it takes for this particle to first reach the target. And from time to time, the particle is subject to an external potential, which is a confining potential like this one, which is represented in a 3D view of the same thing, basically. And the confining potential uh, is centered uh, at uh, the origin, which is here and tends to attract the particle back to the, not to the starting position, but to a fixed point, to the minimum of the potential, let's say, with some fluctuations. And then uh, this, uh, this time interval where the potential is applied uh, lasts for some time, and then there is a free phase of diffusion again, and then another interval, which is randomly, which happens randomly, uh, with some rates, and uh, we want to, to study this system. So at each potential resetting, the particle is kind of attracted towards the origin, mimicking some kind of resetting experiment. So we, we have a state one where we have the potential. Here we have, let's say, a target in the position minus one. Uh, a potential with a unique minimum, for instance, this. Uh, piecewise linear potential. And uh, we are, so there are typically three parameters in this problem. One is the strength, the stiffness of the potential or the strength of this potential. The second pa uh, parameter is uh, the rate at which uh, this potential is switched off. So this happened at the rate R1. And uh, the, so when we are in the state zero, where there is no, poten no potential, the potential can be switched on at a rate r naught. So this is an environment which is fluctuating in time uh, where the particle uh, lives. And uh, the particle trajectory, uh, the position is given by the simple overdamped uh, Langevin equation. So where eta e is a usual Gaussian white nose, with delta correlated uh, white nose with zero mean, uh, which represents the, the, the random force, the random forces that are exerted on the particle. And this is a systematic uh, force exerted by the external potential. So it could be harmonic potential, it could be like here, uh, as we, in this example, uh, the V-shaped potential. 
and sigma is one or zero depending on the states of the of the of the potential. So here, this sigma of t is a dichotomic process, uh, so given by these uh, transition rates, and that makes the system basically out of equilibrium. And uh, so, as you may have guessed, these are a dimensionless adimensional quantity, so all the lengths and the time are made dimensionless by dividing by the length, the, the distance between the target and the origin, and the L to the square divided by the diffusion coefficients of the particle, uh, makes a characteristic time, and with all the times here and the position will be adimensional, and this parameter gamma R0 and R1 are also uh, dimensionless. Uh, okay, so uh, the main question here is that we want to uh, uh, answer is uh, does applying the potential intermittently accelerate the target encounter compared with uh, not having a potential or having a potential present all the time? So there are basically two uh, situations. We can fix the potential strengths. Uh, and look for what would be the optimal protocol, the optimal rates uh, for switch on and switch off. And, uh, or for a fixed protocol, so we fix the switching, what would be the optimal strength that we, we should choose for this potential, right? So there are basically, to introduce the quantity that we are interested in, uh, we have the survival probability. So the survival probability is simply, so given a particle that starts at x at time t equals zero, what is the probability that at time t it has not found the target yet? With uh, and the other initial po position is a potential state. So here we specified that there was no potential uh, initially at t equals zero. And here we have a second survival probability, which is the same thing, but with a potential which is switched uh, on uh, initially. So these are quite two different uh, type of experiment, if you wish. And uh, so the mean first passage, so if we can calculate these quantities, the mean first passage time is basically the integral in time of that quantity. So that's the main, the two main quantity that we are interested uh, here. So, uh, and the method, so quickly to go, to, to give an idea of how we can calculate this, is to use the formalism of backward Fokker Planck equation. So imagine that you have a process which starts at time t equals zero from a position x and lasts for a time t plus a delta t, where delta t is small and t is arbitrary. So this interval can be decomposed in a small interval of size delta t at the beginning and a large interval of size t here. So after this uh, delta t, the, at times delta t, the new position of the particle says is x plus a small displacement xc, right? And uh, so the probability that uh, the survival probability is equal to the probability of surviving here, which is basically one because delta t is very small, and times the probability that the particle that starts at x plus xi and that lasts a little bit shorter uh, time t has also survived. survived. So uh, simply we have this equality uh, for small delta t before the survival probability and the same function uh, evaluated at x plus psi and t, time t. And we make an average over the uh, all the possible position xi that can be reached in the times delta t. So by expanding this relation at order delta t and expanding this, uh, uh, assuming that xi is much smaller than, than x, we arrive at a diffusion equation simply for Brownian motion. 
with the initial condition that the survival probability at times t equals zero uh, is one because uh, if unless you are uh, really located right at the target you, you have survived uh, when you have start you, you just started and when you start right at the target at any time the survival probability is zero because you are immediately absorbed so in our problem with the potential this is nearly the same thing except that we have to specify the initial condition of the potential. And after this interval delta t, there is a small probability, but still it's important, uh, R1 delta t, that the potential has, is going to be switched off during this interval. So now you will have that the same relation, but that will involve the probability of surviving t starting from x to x xi with a potential which is initially switched off. And with the complementary probability, the, the potential has not been switched off. And uh, so we have the same term as before. So this gives rise to an equation, a backward for Kaplan equation. So why it is called backward? Because in this equation, we, X is not the current position, is the initial position of the particle. And so we, we are used, uh, uh, that uh, the diffusion equation uh, applies to concentrations or to probability of presence of a particle. But here it applies to a probability, that is to say a number which is between zero and one. And, and the solution are quite different. And then the initial condition is also quite different uh, as I have explained. So this is uh, the result of the expansion. So there is a potential that, that, that appears here because we have a net displacement due to the external force when it is applied. And this, is, this uh, contributes to the, uh, to the Taylor expansion at order one. And we have the same kind of condition uh, in the boundary condition. So we can also deduce a similar equation for Q naught and integrate over time. And we obtain this equation uh, for the mean first passage time. So which are basically Laplace equations with additional terms here. So uh, just as a parenthesis, for the simple diffusion problem, we obtain that the second derivative of the mean first passage time starting at x is equal to minus one, the case of simple Brownian motion. So there is an analogy with electrostatics uh, in the Maxwell equation uh, for the potential. Uh, so it's uh, equivalent to calculating the poten electrostatic potential uh, of uh, in a medium with uniform charge density, a uh, negative charge density. In an infinite space, the potential is infinite. So which means that the Brownian particle or the random walk uh, will last for, on average, an infinite time to find the target. So that's the origin of the infinite, uh, the infinite quantity that I, I mentioned at the beginning. But with these additional terms, the, the times becomes finite as we see in the solution. So in general, it is very difficult to solve a system like this one. Uh, because uh, so for any uh, arbitrary potential, it's not possible. So we have chosen the piecewise linear potential, uh, which makes uh, things a little bit simpler. And we can solve on each side for x positive, x negative, and match the solutions and apply the boundary condition. But although by doing this, the expression that we obtain is quite horrible, and I will not uh, show it. Uh, but we we that we we can do it. So now for the results. So uh, let's assume uh, from now on that we start at the initial the, the potential minimum. The, put, the initial put position of the process is x equals to zero. And what we want to do is to fix the potential strengths, and we want to see what is the optimal protocol. So we seek to minimize the solution that we have obtained over the, the constant rate. And for each potential strength, there is a pair of optimal parameter that we can plot as a function of gamma, which is shown here. And here are, happen some quite unexpected uh, and non-trivial results. In particular, a phase transition or a transition analogous to a phase transition or a second order phase transition in statistical physics. 
Here we will focus first on the time T1, when we start with the potential on. So what the result tells us is that if the strength of the potential, which is, I recall, a dimensionless quantity, is less than 1.22 something, then the best strategy is just to keep the potential steady, and that will give the fastest uh, mean first passage time uh, to the target. And this mean first passage time will be given by this expression, which is nothing else than the equilibrium Kramer's uh, escape time of the particle. Because actually the Kramer's uh, rate uh, or the Arrhenius law are in a, in a way a first passage problem. So this is basically an Arrhenius law. So we see that the time increase exponentially fast with the energy barrier that we have to, to climb to, to reach the point, the, the target, uh, which is exponential gamma. But what we sometimes of, uh, often uh, forget is that the Arrhenius law is only an approximation for a very high barrier com compared to cavity, which is set to one here. And there are some other corrections. And there is this prefactor also, uh, which depends uh, on, the, on the stiffness or the energy. So, uh, so below, above, sorry, these uh, critical uh, strengths, so there is a non-trivial resetting protocol that do that does best that uh, than uh, this uh, particular time, this equilibrium Kramer's uh, escape uh, time. And so in this case, an intermediate uh, resetting protocol uh, it becomes optimal. And uh, so. Uh, at the same time, so the, the, for the parameter, for the other parameter, so this is a switch on rate uh, as this shape, this decreasing shape. So, which means that when we are very slightly above this gamma C, uh, so the best strategy for the diffusing particle to find the target is to switch off the potential quite rarely from time to time, not very often. And once it is switched off, then switch on, back it on uh, at a rate which is quite high, of the order of 41. So I recall that these are dimension, uh, adimensional quantities, right, with respect to the typical time of diffusion. And as the potential stiffness increases, so we need to apply the potential uh, less of less for for shorter period of time, so as it, this increases, and uh, we let diffuse the particle for longer period of time, so the rate r zero decreases until it reaches an asymptotic value, which kind of which is actually equivalent to the problem of Evans Majumdar because when you have the potential which is extremely steep, it is equivalent to in instantaneous resetting to zero energy because the potential is very strong and everything happens in, in nearly zero time and the particle gets very localized at the potential minimum. So we recover as a particular case the, uh, the problem of the, the results uh, of the idealized resetting model. So uh, so the interesting thing is that above this critical value, the time needed to reach the target is below the time that it would take on average with the potential on or in equilibrium. So the non-equilibrium, the intermittent resetting helps the search process. And this is this green uh, curve here uh, which is a display, it will display the mean first passage time as a function of gamma. So the higher gamma, the shorter the uh, mean first passage time. And here we have plotted the Kramer's time, so the one given by the previous formula, the equilibrium. So before the critical value, the two curves are the same, and then the green curve departs from the equilibrium. And if we take a zoom of this region, so there is something that puzzled us for, for 
quite a, a long time. We can notice that uh, first this Kramer's time uh, as is minimal for a particular uh, values of gamma, which is uh, 1.44 something, which is very close actually to the, what we found for gamma C, which is 1.22 something. So we ask the question, why uh, these two values so close to each other? Uh, and why, when we also add uh, an argument for, uh, because we, that, L, that told us that the critical uh, parameter should be equal to this uh, optimal equilibrium value. So we should, should have this green curve and then depart from here, but it just happens a little bit before. And this kind of uh, surprised us, and we wanted to to uh, to to understand this a little bit better. Uh, and what we did is near the transition is a little bit in the spirit of the physics, statistical physics of phase transition. Uh, we did uh, some perturbative expansion in small parameter. And the small parameter was actually R1 or the, the ratio of these two. Uh, rates r1 divided by r0. So I recall these are the equation uh, that uh, the starting equation, and it's a little bit like when you do a perturbative expansion uh, on the Schrödinger equation in quantum mechanics. It's a very similar here. So what we do is just to expand the solution of the equation as a power as a power series uh, of r1. Uh, uh, over uh, R2, R0, and uh, uh, with uh, this is a reference value, this is a Kramer's for uh, the Kramer's escape time uh, for R1 equals to zero, and we seek to calculate these coefficients. And we paid in particular attention to the first order contribution that we called for some reason uh, the dispersion relation. And so the, the physics here is, is very simple, at least the phenomenology is very simple. If T1 is, is always positive, uh, what it tells is if you uh, switch off the potential from time to time, uh, no matter how you switch it uh, on afterwards, uh, there will be an increase uh, in the time, uh, in the mean first passage time compared to the Kramer's time. But this, if this takes negative value, then you will have a decrease. So you will have an improvement in the search by applying a small uh, switch off uh, to the potential. And then you can try to minimize this polynomial with respect to, to, to R1 and, and, and obtain the, of an optimal value. So what we, what we actually find is that this coefficient is a non-monotonous function of this parameter uh, R0. And it can actually be positive for all values below some gamma value uh, for small gamma. And there is a gamma C such that this curve, as gamma increases, this curve decreases and touches at some point the axis Y uh, 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 y equals to zero, and then starts to be negative or to exhibit a small region of values R naught that are uh, that for which uh, the rate is negative. So if and this gives actually so this is the full expression for this this function that is plotted here. So it's a bit uh, ugly formula that it is uh, the only ugly formula in this talk. But by looking for the a point like this varying gamma, so you, you look for the parameter gamma such that the minimum of this curve is equal to appends to uh, zero. And this gives a critical RC, which is precisely this high value of 41 that I, uh, pre that I presented uh, before. So, if you are a little bit above the critical length, so if there are some negative value, if you choose this value around 41 and the so small R1, then you will improve the search process. But if you choose other values of R0, then you will 
uh, on the contrary, makes the search process uh, longer. So this is kind of unexpected uh, type of uh, transition. And uh, from this, we can obtain uh, so the, the, the relationship between the optimal switch off rate and, and the difference to the critical uh, strength, a uh, little bit like uh, magnetization, if you wish, in a critical phenomena of the using model. So that would be some, something like an order parameter. And uh, we also see that the corresponding uh, time, the optimal time T1, actually decreases uh, compared to the equilibrium values. And uh, this effect becomes stronger as uh, we go away from the transition point. So that, that is a, another type of result, and I, uh, so which are now considering the case. Uh, so the same problem, but we start with the potential, which is initially switched off at time t equals zero. So it's a different type of experiment. And we ask for, okay, the same question, what are the optimal rates uh, given a fixed uh, potential uh, strength? And the results are quite different from the previous one. Although we may think that there is not a big difference between these two experiments, actually it's quite big difference in the sense that now we have a first order uh, transition in the sense that the optimal parameter exhibit discontinuities uh, at a different uh, critical value, uh, gamma C prime. And here you can add, you can have a, uh, you have an inset showing the more, this into into more details. So th this case is more difficult. So it's much more difficult to understand uh, perturbatively. But this is what the minimization of the exact solution, the numerical minimization of the exact solution, tells us. And uh, so as often, uh, first order transition in statistical physics are associated so, with discontinuities and with metastability. And uh, here we have something very similar. Uh, metastability is a phenomenon where you have a quantity, for instance, the energy, or here what the time that we want to minimize, that has uh, several uh, local minimum and not one local minimum. Uh, like in the previous uh, example. And uh, so what we have, here, if we plot that quantity, which is a partial minimization of uh, the, the time with respect to R1 as a function of R0, we see that we have different, we have several, we have two local minimum. So one is absolute minimum and one is a local minimum. And there is an exchange of of eights that uh, uh, that happens exactly at gamma c prime. So above gamma up above this critical value where the two minimum are exactly at the same level, the minimum is now is switching in a discontinuous way from this value to to this value. So that's basically the the, the, the explanation, which is quite simple, of the discontinuities in the transition the rate. And uh, so finally, to, to close uh, with uh, these results, so we can ask a different question, uh, which is to take the, as, as before, the initial position zero x equals zero, and now to fix the transition rates, R0 uh, and R1. And to ask the question, what would be the optimal potential strength, the one that will minimize this mean first passage time? So what we see is, uh, so we can plot uh, this. So these are the exact uh, solution and the dots are a simulation based on the Gillespie uh, algorithm and the Brownian uh, dynamics. So we see that <clears throat> there is an optimal strength for these two parameter value. So the of R0 R uh, is given by 0.1 and R1 is given by a value, a particular value here. And we actually have a, <clears throat> a, a absolute minimum, but we see that we, there are also another local minimum, but at a higher time, 
uh, in at uh, gamma goes to infinity. And there is an exchange of eights at a particular critical uh, rate, and which is, for instance, after this rate, for instance, this purple curve, uh, we see that the absolute minimum uh, becomes a local minimum. And now that the absolute minimum is reached at a for infinitely stiff potential. So the explanation, so if we if we plot the minimum, the, the optimal strength or one over the optimal strength as a function of one of the rate R1, we see an abrupt transition. So qualitatively, uh, this can be explained by, by the following, that we see that the, by applying, uh, so gamma star is as infinite, finite or infinite in this, in, this, uh, in this problem. So the infinite potential is very convenient because you bring back the particle infinitely fast to the origin. So you don't waste the time in the return path toward the origin. So if you were on the wrong side of space where the target is not located, you just come back very rapidly to this position and you don't waste time in the trip. But uh, then once you have reached the origin, you will remain there for a time until the potential is switched off. And you may lose some time because you will be completely fixed and this time will not be dedicated to search. So if you stay too long, so if uh, R1 it becomes too small, uh, so it's convenient uh, to, to find a compromise that would be to have a slower return to, towards the origin, but at the same time, you can still keep searching while you are uh, returning on average to the origin because you may have a fluctuation that brings you towards the target. So it's kind of a subtle effect and this leads to uh, discontinuous uh, phase transition to, 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 call, to, to call it like this, in analogy with uh, uh, phase transition in, in uh, thermodynamics. So, and this is a phase diagram, uh, depending on the value of the resetting parameter, you would have uh, the infinite phase or the finite phase, and we can, uh, in some limit, in the limit of uh, small uh, rates, calculate uh, analytically the, the boundary between these two phases. And uh, it's actually, there is a scaling law between the critical line as a function of uh, R0. Or the other way around, R0 critical is the fourth power of R1. Okay, so that's basically uh, what I wanted to, to present uh, today. And uh, so what I wanted to, to to call uh, to, to 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 talk about was uh, uh, about the diffusion as a, in an intermittent confining potential, uh, which is a problem which has not been quite studied uh, in this context of uh, first passage time. Uh, it's a very well known uh, uh, sort of time dependent potential are very widely used. For instance, in the ratchet effect or in for uh, active transport uh, of uh, passive particles, thanks to uh, asymmetric potential that are switched off or switched on uh, periodically. And here we could use the, somehow, somehow these, idea, these ideas uh, to, as a generalization of uh, resetting processes. And uh, by doing this, we, we incorporate physical constraints that are not taken into account in the idealized resetting model. And this gives rise to some complications, but also to some richer phenomenology also. And uh, so we have proven that the non-equilibrium processes can accelerate a search task in this very simple setting with 1D Brownian particle, but there could be some other application maybe in, uh, in other in other fields or other analogies. And in particular, we have these continuous or discontinuous transitions in the optimal parameters. 
So a, a, a logical extension would be to consider, for instance, harmonic potential, which are more generic than piecewise linear potential, but they are more difficult to deal with uh, mathematically speaking. So we only have some results on this. And also some inter an interesting question is not to, would be not to focus only on the mean first passage time, but on the whole distribution of first passage time and the variance and all the moments of the distribution, for instance, which gives much more information about the search process than just the mean first passage. And to consider also other type of protocols, for instance, periodic uh, transitions instead of, uh, of uh, instead of transition driven by some constant rates. And these are more complicated to handle, also because they, they are non-Markovian in a sense, because the distribution of the duration between you know, of the intervals with the potential or with, without the potential are no longer exponentially distributed. And uh, also, uh, one of the main motivations is that we hope that one day we will have an experiment, an experiment a result to, to, to show uh, with uh, this problem. And uh, that's it. And I wanted to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Denny. So if anybody have any question. Hi, Thomas. Okay, hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, really nice. Um, my question is, well, uh, maybe two. <clears throat> One is about the effect of the environment. So. So I think uh, you have, of course, this dissipative force, which is in this Langevin equation. But what if the dissipation is not very fast? So is, this is not taken into account, right? Or is it interesting to take into account, or is it? Yeah, you you mean uh, <clears throat> if you have some inertial terms, for instance, uh, or oh yeah, what I mean that if, for instance, you switch on the potential and uh, well, the particle is accelerated towards the center, but if the dissipation is not very strong, then it will start to... To oscillate or something Oscillate, like that. yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, we didn't uh, take, took into account the, these effects. Uh, surely, yeah, so the, some inertia, that, that would be interesting, yeah, to, to consider. Even for the simple Brownian particle in the constant potential, actually, I don't know, maybe results are available on this problem. Uh, but yes, definitely that's, uh, that opens, if we have inertial effect or the acceleration, which is neglected here, then we can have basically very different results. Uh, because, well, there is an interplay between uh, the oscillation and the noise, and uh, obviously it's very different. So I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, maybe that could be done. Uh, I think there is a sort of possible to do um, probably with uh, the backward focal Planck equation formalism, maybe. Uh, but uh, Basically, the problem becomes uh, for the particle that uh, the inertia introduces some memory. So that complicates a lot things. Yeah. But I, I don't have an idea what could be the, 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 the results with, with, this, uh, with these oscillations. I see. Can I just ask a quick second question? Maybe I'm not yes. sure if I understood. If you switch on the potential, this particle will move with a finite velocity towards the center, right? Yes. And that's, but it's finite and it's constant. Yeah, actually, this is basically the... this is basically gamma, right? This is oh, basically okay. the 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 limit velocity. Uh, due to, so the friction is assumed to be constant uh, this time, and it is basically uh, it is incorporated into the the definition of gamma. So yes, you, you have exactly oh, but, say you have a, a drift 
but this is a mean drift, right? Because you have the fluctuations that comes around the drift. You, you but this looks like it's increasing, right? With X or not? Is it, uh, so the velocity is proportional to X. No, the velocity will be constant. In the case of the piecewise linear potential, oh. the, the velocity will be constant. But, but if it is harmonic potential, yes, it will increase with, uh, with the position. And that makes things more complicated. OK, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. OK, any more questions? Okay, so in YouTube, can't see much. Yeah, there is no question from YouTube. So, okay, so if nobody have any question, then let us thank the speaker. Maybe I can have a second question then. Yeah, yeah, please, please. <laughs> Yes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I understood well the protocols. I mean, what your last results? They are just so you switch on your the force field, say, and then there is a finite probability to switch it off, but it's not intermittent. Or can it be switched on and off with certain rates? In the last one, or in well, maybe maybe the. What is where you got to your uh, analytical result, for instance? Okay, well, for instance, here, it, yes, in, in this case, we don't know what are the rates, uh, what are the optimal rates, right? We, 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 we calculate T for any rates, any switch on, switch off rate, and any potential strength, and then we fix the potential strengths and we try to find the minimum, the best rates. So there are varying parameters or tuning parameter, and that we call these uh, R1 uh, optimum, which is R1 star, so an R0 star. So these are the, the optimal rates for that potential strength. So they might be zero, they might be non-zero. But well. it's not like in the figure, in this small picture you show that you only have one switch off and that's it. So. Yeah, no, 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 maybe okay. this is a little bit misleading. This is only the initial state. This is only the initial condition. Actually, maybe I should have only put the first phase. But then after this white one, that there are other many other many other transitions until I mean until the particle is absorbed. Okay, basically. yeah, yeah, that was my question. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are really intermittent until absorption. Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Okay. So, yeah, if there is no question from any other people, then let us thank Denny for the nice talk. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.